Welcome to 52 Weeks of Hope. This is where you get to hear how to feel happy, balanced, and worthwhile. How to make that lonely ache vanish and feel empowered, confident, and secure. I'm Lauren Abrams, and I get to help you feel that magic again since going through my own dark night of the soul by chatting with incredible leaders, healers, and change agents who give you their message of hope after overcoming challenges of their own. And today we're talking to author, psychic, and psychic medium, Bill Phillip. Do you feel like you have this really intuitive part of you and you'd love to develop it more? Do you sometimes just get an unexplainable feeling or knowing inside of you and then you dismiss it? Do you remember being a kid and having the best imagination ever? You're going to love hearing Bill because he has the easiest tools ever for you. I know I did a whole bunch of them and I'm in love with his simple techniques for going inward, setting intentions and manifesting your dreams. And you're going to love them too. Welcome to 52 Weeks of Hope, Bill. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Congratulations on your new book, Soul Searching. I've got it right here. It's it's all dog eared and everything else I had it okay I have to say it's I was like captivated right away with your book it doesn't always happen when someone sends me a book and and I love your publisher um so your book is soul searching tune into spirit and awaken your inner wisdom and your story about you as a six-year-old on the bus with your mom I mean that is kind of embedded in my brain but I think it's how you initially maybe tapped into your own spirit and connection to your own abilities. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes. For me, it began at a very young age. For everyone, I, I really believe that their their trauma or their hearts breaking open is what really connects them to spirit, <laughs> their higher self, you know, and for each person, it'll always be individual to them. Sometimes it's in their 40s or 50s. For me, it was when I was five, you know, so yeah. Yeah. So do you want to maybe talk about that and how did you know at the time, like, this is it. And when did that connect for you, I guess? You know, when I was when I was a child, I always recalled memories of, especially at night before I would go to sleep, seeing faces around me with the mouths moving, you know, things like that. My mom told me I watched too many scary movies. And eventually, um, my subconscious mind accepted that programming. And that's what happened. So um, it wasn't until she she crossed over many years later that she came to me and everything was was sort of reactivated within myself again of that knowing. Um, so it was a really crazy t- um, time for me in my childhood, kind of being yanked around across the country, um, a lot of instability, a lot of trauma. Um, but I feel like within that trauma, I had to go within. I had to surround myself with what came to me naturally was this light source. And that light source I came to call spirit. And so um, ever since that time, it took a lot of sort of just uh, soul searching and also trusting myself as well. Um, I was going to school to be an opera singer in my in my teenage years, you know, and I and I couldn't escape this and it followed me. And here I am today. And it's, you know, it's, it's what I do every day of my life. So I'm very grateful. Yeah. I mean, there's all these videos and everything of you, you know, just reading and being a psychic medium. And I love the way you talk about intention setting in this book, because it's on a much larger scale and on a daily scale and on an individual, whatever it is that's in front of me. Like, I mean, my intention setting for this interview was, you know, to be of service to as many people as possible and to be here present for this interview. Um, It's it's almost Pavlovian for me at this point, but you did it on a much greater scale and and you opened my mind. And and I always try every day to have an open heart and an open mind. So I I, can you please talk about it because it's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, for me, intention setting is, I believe it's one of our biggest superpowers here. A lot of people um, don't understand how powerful it actually is because when you're when you're in your imaginative mind and you're vibrating and you're in a different space, all together, that in itself is completely transformative. But taking it one step further and actually imprinting the emotion, the feeling, the visuals that you're wanting to experience, you are projecting it outward outside of yourself. And that energy has to meet up with you. So it's always about sort of just like sending out that energy and then receiving it when it's meant to be received. And I feel like the more that we do it, um, I know for me, I do it first thing in the morning. I do it before I begin my day. I do it before I leave the house, before my partner leaves the house. I surround him in white light around his car. I'm always throwing light around everything. 
It's part of my woo-woo ways, but it has definitely um, kept me protected since I was six years old on that bus. And I know that it always will. Yeah. So are there tools and things that you can tell people who are listening that they can do? Absolutely. You know, for me, an intention is just basically going within first, sort of like just disconnecting from the outside world is the is the first step of that. And then getting grounded, getting clear about what you're wanting to experience in that moment, whether it be happiness, peace, love, success, opulence, whatever you want to throw into it, just sort of focusing on the mantra and then letting it go. It's it's really that, it's that simple, honestly. It's not like anything too crazy, but the more that you practice it, it is like building a muscle, I find. And so you'll know um, if you're doing it daily and then let's just say a month into it, you're in a, in a hurry for some reason and you don't do it first thing in the morning, you're going to feel off. You're going to feel like, wait, something is not right right now. I'm like, discombobulated. I'm walking through quicksand. What's going on? So uh, really going into intention helps get you into the flow. Okay. I love the example you gave of you were giving individual sessions and you wanted to work on a larger scale. And so that that's a great example. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. You know, this was many, many years ago now. And <laughs> You know, my my intention with spirit um, when I was first understanding what was going on was I wasn't going to solicit anybody f- with this. You know, I didn't want to walk up someone on the street and just give them a reading. So I had this intention with spirit that if you wanted me to help your loved ones, you would find a way for them to find me. And that's how it always began. So um, in the beginning of this, um, I kept hearing from other mediums, too, that it was going to be on a larger scale than it was um, and that they saw me in front of, you know, large crowds, basically. So I went with that intention. I was in prayer and intention setting. And I said, OK, spirit, let's take this to the next level and see where this goes. And my intention was to be of service, to pay it forward. And it, it really began um, many years ago Um through charitable causes, actually. So I remember doing a charity event for a cancer organization. And from that point forward, um, I really, it just kind of happened very quickly where I was all over the place after that, you know, and people wanted me to um, go to their locations around the country, their, whether, whether they be comedy clubs or whether they, they, they be spiritual churches. I was I was literally traveling all over the country doing this. So it was really eye-opening for me and also... Um, just really um, affirming that when you do set the intention, how it shows up for you, if, if you trust and if you surrender to what it basically surrendering to what you think it should look like and just knowing that the vibration of it, the energy of it is what will find you. So staying out of what it should look like and, and trust that it'll happen. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you talk about the vibration, that's a good segue into how you talk about gratitude, which I talk about probably every episode for a hundred, however many episodes, <laughs> I'm big on gratitude practice. So yeah, um, I, let's, I love hearing how you talk about gratitude. Thank you. You know, gratitude for me um, has always been a really big part of my um, daily practice. And actually, within this book, it's one of my favorite exercises, actually, is doing this. And I will do it um, as often as I can throughout my day. It's sort of like a game for me, actually. How often can I can I apply this practice to my own life? What I find that it does is it instantly connects you with your higher self. It connects you with the cosmos, with spirit, with the universe. And the more that you do it, you literally are adding to your account, you know, to your cosmic bank account of energy. And it does feel that way. The more that you do it, you just feel more positive, more radiant. It gets you out of that rational part of your thinking, that stinking thinking, you know, and that really is the, uh, the threshold I believe for manifestation is being, having the, having the platform of positive energy, positive flow. And when you're, when you are reciting things that you're grateful for in your life, and it can be as simple for your breath, for being able to breathe, you know, for being able to see it's, it's those little things that we usually don't, um, are usually take for granted rather that are the biggest gifts that we can experience when we're here, you know? So when we're able to really 
give our focus to those things around us, um, we're just attracting more and more of that energy vibration to our lives. Yeah, now that that's amazing. So you talk about flipping the energy of negative thoughts. How? Okay, how can somebody take those negative thoughts and, and flip that energy? especially when you're in it. Absolutely. I I feel like having an awareness of it first is the first step of it, you know? So if you, um, if you're not aware of it and you're letting it kind of dictate, then we kind of fall into this mentality where we're down the rabbit hole and we cannot escape it. And we all go through it because we're here, we're in a physical shell. It's part of our human DNA, right? Um, but when we take the time to first be aware of it, acknowledge it, speak it out first, you know, then you have the power to transform those thoughts, to transform your belief system. Because we're all so impressionable and we all um, have been programmed from a very early age to believe certain things, um, we've come here karmically to undo those belief systems. We've come here to be our own voice, our own mind, um, to have our own opinions about life. And so typically this happens, you know, going into our adult years when we have to undo things that were programmed much earlier for us, you know. Um, But I, I really do feel like writing things down is a powerful tool. It helps kind of unclog the drain, so to speak, you know. So to anyone who's listening right now, who's like, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, or maybe there, there's a fear element to it. Acknowledging it is the first step of changing it. And putting it on paper, and especially the exercise in the book, too, of how we flip it around. Um, for me, when I was guided to do this exercise, and I was able to see, um, you know, the, the ego self and the spirit self back, back and forth, it really was eye-opening to me as well. Like, oh my gosh, this, is, this makes so much sense, you know? Um, it was a reminder of how the two parts of our self work in tandem together. So really just having an awareness of it is the first step of changing it. Yeah. How did you, now you, you grew up with these drug addicted parents on both coasts. How did you end up like this? Like listening to you, um, I mean, and a trajectory of being an opera singer and, and so on. You know, I, I feel like for me, it was really about, um, trusting what was right for me and not really listening to the outside world, you know, otherwise things would have been different for me. And thankfully I had my grandmother who is still here was a really big, had a really big, big impact on me. She basically took me in from the time I was 10 until, you know, I was basically an adult. So her, her kindness, her generosity, and just who she is as, as a pure being, I think really rubbed off onto me. Um, and those philosophies, I just basically made my own because it doesn't matter what religion you are or what belief system you have. If, if you are operating from the perspective of being of service, having an open heart and giving, being generous, that's why we're here. We're all here to be of service on some level, you know? Um, so really it came down to just keeping that in the forefront of my mind as a healer, healers always want to be of service. They always want to fix things for people and make things right, you know, and it was part of my DNA and, um, and it showed up early for me. And I, I really do feel like um, going through what I did as, as a child, um, it helped me have compassion for things in my life, you know, helped me have compassion for my parents as well, because we're all flawed, you know, no one's perfect here. So they chose to have this arrangement in this life and it served me. So I always tell people they were basically my greatest teachers on this journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so what's the hardest thing that you've ever gone through and how did you get through it? Oh, um, I think the hardest thing that I went through um, would have probably been accepting my gift for what it was, you know, and not running away from it because um, there was a lot of fear and doubt in the very beginning with this. I I did not want to accept this as my identity. And especially back in the day when it really wasn't as mainstream as it is today, um, I had to have some really good friends and support systems around me, keeping me grounded and basically telling me to keep going with it. You know, that was a really big thing. And <clears throat> I think because I didn't have that foundation as a child as well, or the support, you know, as a child that 
it really um, crept up with me in my adult years of having to really just have more confidence and have more understanding and more belief in myself. That was really probably my biggest challenge. But once I pushed through, it was also my biggest gift as well. Yeah, that, I could see that. So when you tell people you're a psychic medium, what's the biggest question you're asked? You know, besides the lotto numbers, that, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I but, didn't um, <laughs> yeah, I get that one. You know, or usually people will, will put their palms out at me and say, oh, here, you know, read my palm. And I'm like, that's not how this works. Yeah. Exactly, you know, um, but I, um, I, I'm really select with, 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 you know, what I say at this time. I might tell people, you know, I um, am, a, am, a, am an author, or, you know, or work in the spiritual. I don't always tell them what I do exactly because um, not everyone gets it either, you know. And so I, I really kind of feel it out first to yeah, make sure yeah. I'm not going to get um, the wrong reaction from somebody, you know. Yeah, that's true. So why did you write a third book? You know, this book um, is a lot different than the, than the previous two. Um, during um, the past three years, actually, it was it was really during the beginning of the pandemic pandemic actually, where I was uh, seeing this, the world um, going into a fear cloud, which was very understandable. And so something that I did back then was try to help my community rise above it through their own um, visualization, through meditation, through active visualization. And from there, I really thought, how can I be of service to help people regardless of this time in, in society and in history, it's just gonna keep escalating. So I wanted people to know their true power source, what their truth was, how to access what was in their belief system, their imagination, their intuitive nature, their connection to it all. Because as we keep moving along, we're gonna need these techniques. We are. Yeah, and, and I, seriously, they are so easy. They're Thank so you. accessible. The book is so readable. I, I mean, I just sat there. The chapters are short. They're easy. The tools are like you can just pick them up and do them. That's really yeah. my 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 jam is I, you know, I, I get lost in books pretty easily. So I wanted the reader to have a very simplistic guidebook, something very simple that anyone could really read or understand, you know, so that is great validation to hear that today from you. Yeah, it's a clip. You can take it wherever you need. Yeah, you've got you definitely can do that. So how does somebody listening know their true their tr superpower? You know, it really just depends on where they're at in their life. But typically um, your superpower is just dormant within yourself. It's trying to get your attention. It's that little voice within kind of like creeping in asking for permission to come forward, you know? And so once we're able to get out of the illusion of the, of the physical world and the day-to-day -day and just the hustle and bustle, and we're able, able to be present with our truest nature, it's very, very clear what that is for each person. But you have to be um, courageous and you have to be willing to accept it, not to change who you are, but to go into, you know, to lean into who you truly are. And I believe each person knows that or they will once they get grounded and clear within themselves. Yeah, that's a good segue into what would you tell somebody who they're afraid to take that leap? They're not happy with where they are and they know they're meant for something greater, but they're scared. I would encourage them literally to sit in prayer, to sit in meditation, even if it's just sitting and visualizing the white light around you, um, as simple as that may seem, what it's doing is it's allowing you to sort of vibrate out to, into the fabric of the universe, the fabric of your ever knowing nature. Um, and when you're in that space, you, there's going to be a level of uh, pick me up or an elevation that occurs that makes you able to take the risk, to cut the cord, to jump off the diving board. Because at some point it's going to happen. You know, it really is. And I feel like it's not always meant to be today, though. And that's OK as well, you know. But if you're patient with yourself and if you go back within into your inner world, the time or the opportunity, rather, will show up when it's right. That's so good. Do you have a message I hope you want to give? Yes. The message I want to give is that there's more good in this world than bad. And there are more people wanting to help than not. We are all connected to that grid of love and to that grid of energy. And when we're able to vibrate with that intention, 
of giving and of being of service, we will attract that energy back to us. And that's what makes the world a better place. Yay. Now, this is great. So, of course, we'll have all of the links to Bill's How to Reach Him. And he has a very thriving uh, community. So, um, and the link to his book and everything else will be in the show notes. So, thank you so much for being a guest today on 52 Weeks of Hope. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> 